Welcome again to another day with us in the backyard Avery. One of the things we want to give you some insight into is how do we make queens and kind of like the process, walk you through what we do and what it involves, yes? And kind of show you how I integrate it into the entire operation so that I can benefit from having young queens on the reserve so that I can swap them out into more production hives. So what I'm here beside is this colony here. It is what we would refer to as a queen cell builder. Now typically there's two parts to the setup. They refer to it as the, the, the cell builder and then the finisher. The cell builder part is where you really want that portion of the setup to be absolutely hopelessly queenless where there's not a larva in there that is of the right age where the bees can change it into um, a queen and what you want also in there is a lot of nurse bees a lot of food a lot of pollen and what you also want to simulate and it's good to simulate this is some form of foraging action taking place so it will, always, uh, it will almost mimic a legitimate stable colony with the exception that it is hopelessly queenless. It has different stages of brood in there, it has hatching brood, it has some larvae in there but it is not young enough for the bee to turn into queen cells. So that setup is what we refer to as a queen cell builder. reason why it has that name is because we are then going to give it the larva that we want and once you put the larva of the right age, 12 hours, 24 hours, the bees, the nurse bees that are in that colony, they will then build the queen cells from those larvae, hence the name cell builder, queen cell builder, yes? So that's kind of the process. Now, typically the second part, the finisher, um, comes in play once you see that they start making queen cells from the, the larva that you give them. Uh, which is typically like a day or I think two days after you give them the larvae and two days after that you can typically move it to the finisher stage and that means you can then put this colony or put the cells above a colony um, that is very strong and still have a lot of food but it's stable in terms of it has a queen but you would put it above a queen excluder and you put it between a lot of brood and um, pollen and so forth so you can typically you can convert this back into a finisher by putting a stable colony below and putting a queen excluder and then transferring everything here above that queen excluder and it is in a finisher stage the finisher state isn't entirely necessary um, that's typically when you want to do a lot of, of grafting um, and so forth you can pretty much just put it in the finisher state and then later down like probably a week after you can then convert it back to the cell builder state um, and then use it again right but right now i'm just using pure the pure first stage which is just a cell builder so i've set it up lots of nurse bees different stage of larvae in there it's hopelessly queenless it has a lot of pollen a lot of open frames of nectar right now it is being stimulated by natural nectar that's coming in as well i didn't feed it any form of pollen substitute or sugar syrup or anything it's just being done purely natural i just i'm experimenting just to see what will happen given that i know things are there's a lot of food in there i just want to see what will happen but typically um i would feed you know i would feed a very light sugar syrup mixture in this um, colony while i put in the grafts um, probably like half a gallon or so and I'll also put in a pollen substitute in there Just so they have that excessive nutrition just in case rain might fall or anything like that But no rain was falling and it was just a perfect situation for me just to try and see what will happen without those things So once we graft um, typically we Do about 15 grafts at a time. So we'll put those grafts in here and we have done this a couple days ago. I think it's about Sunday I did it. 
So what we're trying to do now is to see how much of that 15 they accepted, right, in terms of us grafting the queens. Now, typically, once we know how much they have accepted, we know how much they're going to do, then cap off into actual fully prepared queen cells and then we can sit, pretty much set up um, queen castles which is pretty much just a hive with multiple compartments where you can house like colonies that are two frame or three frame size yeah, so mine is basically three compartment castles each castle section can hold three frames right so I'll just basically set up two frames in there a frame with cat brood and a frame with food or half and a half food and brood and then just put those queen cells in there and then wait a while until those are hatched off and the virgin queen emerges and hopefully they go out and mate successfully and come back and start to take over those compartment um, castles yeah, and then we observe them we'll use them in the operation once we see the good signs of them having good laying pattern good growth rate and so forth and other like gentleness and so forth that's what we want to bring you to through today just to show you what the cells are looking like and so forth right so step one is really this you have to set up the cell builder for you to set up a cell builder you would have had to have colonies already in place sorry about the smoke you would have to have colonies already in place the key thing is you need strong colonies that where you can take food resources from take root frames from take nurse bees from so in my operation here in the backyard i have approximately 22 production hives these are hives that i'm expecting to produce honey um, in the season now and so before the season really start i always try to make sure that they're relatively strong you know they have a good coverage in the entire um, single chamber um, they have a lot of brooding going on and they, their tendency is they're looking overcrowded right so once i have that situation happening before the season i use that benefit to then create the cell builder so i will take nurse bees from all of my colonies all 22 colonies if they can supplement me getting nurse bees I'll take probably three four frames of nurse bees and shake it into this yes yeah, so just imagine 22 colonies providing me on average two to four frames of nurse bees that means this is a double deep box set up here will have a lot of nurse bees in there right so that's what I so well, that's the objective getting the nurse bees in and then now what will happen is all of these production hives they went through a small um, aki flow in December so they did have a lot of food in their brood area and while I'm gonna start the season I don't necessarily want a lot of food in the brood area you know so I would have swapped out some of those um, extra food put it in here and then drop some foundation sheets in the production hives just to allow them to build comb on those foundation sheets and utilize it for brood right depending on the position I put it so that's how I set up the cell builder using the resources the extra resource the extra manpower and population from the production hives to supplement this so you need some form of way or mechanism to supplement setting this up right you don't necessarily need 22 production hives you can have five hives or so and you're able to get enough nurse bees from those five hives to supplement this process right but the more nurse bees you have the better the results in terms of the queen cells they're going to make right just imagine one queen cell being fed by thousands of bees versus one queen cell being fed by those hundreds you know it, it's gonna play a big part in how well fed those queens and nutrition that those queens are gonna get as opposed to if they don't have a lot of nurse bees so that's what the objective I think those queen have a lot of nurse bees tending to them so that they can get really good nutrients yeah so that's the first stage setting up the cell builder the next stage is knowing which one of the production hives you're going to take the larvae from so I typically 
throughout the season I'll observe different things about each queen in terms of which one is more gentle which one is um, showing good laying pattern laying potential um, which one is giving me the most honey which one is giving me the most pollen which one responds to the hygienic pin testing um, better you know so those all of those um, things all of those things I'm looking for in in finding the better it, you know, and everything that's gonna be perfect but the better um, ones which have the higher of those tendencies those are what I'll use as queen mothers and I'll go through that hive and then typically I'll look for the larva that's of the right age how you kind of gauge that without without using a, a legitimate timing box I won't get into timing box right now but without using a legi legitimate timing box what you do is you look for frames that have eggs on it eggs and larvae right so once you have a, you find a frame with eggs and larvae typically whenever you reach to the rim where eggs start once you start moving into the larvae now the ones that are probably two cells are away from the eggs are typically going to be two I'm um, sorry are typically going to be 12 hours 24 hour larvae smaller larvae you can find in in a nice white puddle of um, royal jelly that's ideal right so trust me just doing it over time you'll get a, a fix on what size larvae it is and once you have your grafting tool now you typically just remove those larvae with the grafting tool put them in the grafting cells and then all you need to do is drop them in the cell builder now typically once you're dropping them in the cell builder you want to ensure that they're between a nice frame of pollen and preferably a nice frame with some sta different stages of larvae you don't necessarily, you're not gonna put eggs in it you know? you're gonna make sure this has older larvae in it but you want to ensure that the nurse bees are there on those frames and they're close by you know the ones tending to the larvae is the better one to use so that's really the full stage right so now we have done all of that already we set up the builder we drop in the graft cells in there what we want to see is how much of the cells they are going to make queens from all right so let's give them a puff of smoke and bring you a little bit closer all right so basically um as you can see there's a lot of bees there's bees in both boxes um so let me just go through All right, so we're not gonna be taking this out for very long. So let's see if we can just show you and give you a glimpse and put it back right away, all right? All right, so from the 15 we did, as you can see here, um, typically you can know when they start them. So if you look there, let's see if we can hold this a little better so we can show you. So looking here, we can just move the bee out the way and you'll see a little these are ones that aren't taken right they didn't make cells from them but then once you look at this and you see that little wax rim compared to this none here and then there's one here one here one here one here one here one here one here, here alright so out of all of this I'll just count the ones that they didn't accept one two three four five six seven so i didn't get seven takes so seven from 15 mean they are gonna make eight queen cells yep so that's eight queen cells out of 15 i'm gonna get um typically probably three more days from now they will cap those off and um, i'll be able to then come back and remove them and put them into some mating castles so given that we have gotten 8 out of 15 graphs, what we needed to do was to set up some mating castles. So what we did is we went through these castles right here and we 
shift out two of them we wanted to move out the queen so that one right there and then that one right there we needed to move out those queens so what we did we took the frames from out there with the queen and everything and we set up these little five frame boxes yeah five frame nukes we we'll put the queen in there with three frames well actually four frames each uh, with in, in, you know food with enough brood and all the bees we could pretty much gather from those colonies right and if you recall these two positions had some reserve hives so what we did we used those reserve hives broke them down and made up these queen castles right so each of these queen castles they would have a nice frame of brood in there a nice frame of food and then we shook off probably an extra two frames of bees nurse bees in each of them right for the section that we know there is a queen in there already because like these these had two queens right most of the bees were flocking to this side so we never had to shake too much because the foragers would go back to this side right however we still kind of try to balance it out so each section we want to make sure it has enough nurse bees in there to take care of this new queen that might hatch out and so forth so that's the objective we don't want any the, the castles to be weak or the mating castles um, to be weak we want them to have enough nurse bees enough food and enough hatching brood that's gonna be happening in a couple of days pretty much so by the time the queen cell hatches you'll have a lot of hatching brood um, that will stimulate her to go out and mate and so forth right so those two queens we moved here um, eventually they'll stay in these new boxes until they've developed um, far beyond staying in it I know this one we could have initially put it into a 10 frame but we say you know what let's not jump the gun let's put her in the nuke give her each of them both of them a foundation sheet and um, enough food and their brood frames and see how well they'll build out and um, kind of start maximizing on the space they have they'll be getting foragers so they're not gonna be weakened from the transition from there to here they'll still have all that forager that would be used to the other box the two 10 frame boxes that was here so that's how these two queens are now reserve queens so as they progress and grow if anything happens to one of my production hives all i'll do is just convert them to a 10 frame move it to the production and then move the production that's collapsing to this location and then we'll do further um, distribution of that population and, and resource essentially yes this is one of them um, where it still has three frames in there two frames of brood and a frame a built out foundation sheet that the reserve the hive here wasn't utilizing so basically when we we're gonna find some way to use these um, but for now we're gonna let it stay here queenless it doesn't have a queen in there um, basically so it's those three frames we're gonna need to find some use for it quickly but we'll eventually find it so that's pretty much the process guys so as i said full cycle we use the production hives make up the cell builder cell builder make queens queens going to queen castles excellent queens from the queen castle process moves to reserve and then if anything happens to a production hive the reserve moves to production so that's pretty much the process it's just a cyclic process so we also have this one that we can break down so we have one more that we can break down here and we have one more here that we can break down so we're gonna do our next batch of queen grafting and these two should be these two colonies that I just showed you should be able to supplement making up some more uh, queen castles and then we just need to decide I think we know the other two queens are gonna move out um, this queen is gonna be moved out and this one here is gonna be moved out so what we'll do is just transfer them to nukes and put them over put one there and then put one up there uh, pretty much and yeah that's it it's gonna take a little while to settle down because the foragers might not be used to this entrance but I can guarantee you by tomorrow morning they're good and dandy and then these little ones now 
um, based on all the wooden um, sections that, I, that you're seeing on the top, those are the castles um, that are set up. So what I'll need to do is after I set them up like this, probably about five days time, six days time, when the cells are ready, I'll go through about the fifth day before I, the day before I move the cells in, mm -hmm. I'll go through all of them, remove all the queen cells that they have in there, because they are gonna make emergency cells. Um, so I'll just remove those, and then the next day I'll just drop in the queen cells. All right, take it easy, guys. Thank you.